Hey there, and welcome back for another deep dive. Today, uh, we're going to be looking at something that proves even the most expensive cars, you know, those supercars, can have problems too. We're talking about the Lamborghini Revuelto. Yeah, it's kind of funny, right? You wouldn't think a Lamborghini would have an issue with something like a windshield wiper, but that's what's making news. Yeah, it's uh, not exactly the kind of thing you'd expect on a car like that. I was looking over the material you sent, and it looks like this recall from Lamborghini came out in September of this year. And it's impacting a lot of cars, like 455 Revueltos, at least here in the U.S. And the problem is, with, get this, the connecting rod on the passenger side wiper arm. And the thing is, this tiny little rod can actually bend, believe it or not. Just imagine you're driving down the road, you're in your brand new Lamborghini, it starts raining, and your passenger side wiper just stops working. Oh man, what a nightmare. So I, can you explain exactly what's causing this bending issue? Well, Lamborghini says it has to do with the material used to make the rod and maybe the dimensions of the rod itself. It could be that the material's too brittle or the rod is just a tiny bit too thin. Over time, these issues could cause it to bend under pressure, especially at high speeds. So it's not like a loose part or something. It's like an actual flaw in the design. It really makes you think about how even a tiny component can cause a domino effect, especially in a Lamborghini. Oh, absolutely. You're paying a premium for this level of craftsmanship, you know, Italian engineering, and a windshield wiper shouldn't be a concern. You would think. But this shows that manufacturing, even at this level, can be really complex, and every single part has to meet these really strict standards. But at least they caught this issue early on, right? I mean, they started making these cars back in April of 23, and it's only a little over a year later. That's right. They were able to catch it with their in-factory checks, so their quality control seems to be doing its job, to a certain extent anyway. But there have already been six warranty claims worldwide, which isn't nothing when you think about how few of these cars are actually out there. That's a good point. Six might not sound like a lot, but for Lamborghini, with a new model, it's a big deal. Have you ever had a car problem, something that seemed small, but turned into something much worse? You know, it's funny you ask that. Back when I was in college, I had this old car, kind of a beater, really, and the turn signal started acting up. I thought, oh, probably just a bulb that needs replacing. But it turned out to be a short in the wiring, could have caused a fire. I was lucky I took it in when I did. Wow, that's scary. Yeah. It just goes to show you that whether it's an old car or a Lamborghini, every part is important for safety. Exactly. And Lamborghini is taking action to fix this wiper issue. There's a recall, which, by the way, even the recalls are pretty high end. Oh, yeah. How so? Well, they're going to start notifying owners, officially, on December 8th of this year. And not just by letter, they're also going to use Lamborghini's customer app. Then owners can schedule to have the wiper rod replaced with an updated one, for free, of course. Wow, even the recall process sounds fancy. But really, it's good that they're doing what's necessary to fix this and keep their reputation strong. Yeah, for sure. And it just goes to show, even with all the technology and engineering, sometimes it's the small stuff that causes big headaches. And those headaches can happen to anyone, even Lamborghini. That's very true. Now, you mentioned how this windshield wiper issue could cause other problems and even hurt Lamborghini's image. This isn't the first time something like this has happened, though, is it? I mean, we've seen examples of small parts causing big issues in other industries too, right? Absolutely. And what's interesting here is how this Lamborghini situation is similar to those other cases. It reminds me of what happened a few years ago with the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, those phone batteries. Oh yeah, those phones were catching fire left and right. That's a perfect example of a small part with a huge impact. Turns out there was a design flaw in the battery itself that made them overheat. It was a disaster for them. Samsung had to recall a ton of phones, they lost billions of dollars, and their reputation took a serious hit. That whole thing just showed how even a little problem in one tiny part can have these enormous consequences, especially with technology we use every day. It makes you realize that even the most advanced products are really just a bunch of parts all put together, and any one of those parts could be a weak link. And speaking of which, I wonder what other seemingly minor components in a Lamborghini could cause major problems if they failed. We're talking about cars with insanely complicated engines and transmissions, not to mention all the other high-tech stuff. Yeah, you're right. Lamborghini has a long history of making high-performance cars, but they've also had their fair share of recalls. And some of those recalls were for parts you'd never even think about until they break. Okay, you're getting me curious now. What's an example? 
Well, back in 2019, Lamborghini had to recall a bunch of Aventadors. The Aventador, that's their top-of-the-line model, right? The one that looks like a fighter jet. That's the one. And this time, it wasn't a windshield wiper. It was a software problem. Wait, a software problem? In a Lamborghini, what kind of issues can a software glitch cause in a car like that? So in this particular case, the software glitch could actually cause the engine to stall, especially at low speeds. So picture this, you just spent like half a million dollars on this amazing car and you're stuck in traffic because your engine died. That's gotta be the most embarrassing way to get noticed in a Lamborghini. Yeah, not a good look. But it just goes to show that even in these super high-end cars where everything is supposed to be mechanically perfect, even a small software bug can cause major problems. So it's not just about the physical parts anymore. Software is becoming more and more important, even in these really mechanically impressive cars. Definitely. Cars rely on software now more than ever for controlling the engines, safety features, all sorts of things. And as that reliance grows, the potential for these kinds of problems is only going to get bigger. Kind of worrying, honestly, especially for someone like me who can barely connect their phone to their car. Yeah. But it seems like there's this really tricky balance between coming up with new technologies and making sure those technologies are reliable. And that's got to be even more important for a luxury brand like Lamborghini. Absolutely. You can't talk about Lamborghini without talking about their history, their image, the feeling you get when you own one of those cars. It's almost like a piece of art. It's true. When you think Lamborghini, you think, you know, high performance, luxury, and that Italian craftsmanship. Like you said, like it's almost an art. They've really built their name on pushing the limits of what a car can be. Yeah, and for a long time that meant focusing on powerful engines, really stylish designs, giving you that exciting, almost raw driving experience. But the car industry is changing, and Lamborghini has to change too, just like all car manufacturers, right? They have to keep up with technology and what people want these days. And the big thing now is electric vehicles. It's a huge change for an industry that's relied on gas engines for, like, over a hundred years. Makes you think about the guy who started it all, Fruccio Lamborghini. He started with tractors, then supercars, and now his company might be leading the way with electric supercars. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. It really is. And you know, there's that story about what made him start his own car company in the first place. I mean, he was already successful. He owned a Ferrari, but he wasn't afraid to point out problems. Yeah. The story goes that he went straight to Enzo Ferrari, you know, the Ferrari guy, because there was an issue with his car's clutch. Yeah. What happened? I've always wondered about that. Well, they say Enzo basically blew him off, told him to go back to making tractors, and supposedly that's what lit a fire under Ferruccio Lamborghini. He decided right then to create a car company that could compete with Ferrari, maybe even be better. Wow. Talk about taking a challenge personally. Mm -hmm. And he ended up creating this iconic brand. But you're right, that independent spirit, that drive to do things differently, it's still a part of Lamborghini today. It's interesting, right? That spirit is still there even now as they try these new things like electric vehicles, which are uncharted territory for them. Totally. Look at the Lanzador, their new electric SUV. It's different from their usual supercars, which are all sleek and gas powered, mm. but it's also this bold, futuristic vehicle. And that still feels very Lamborghini to me. It's like they're saying, hey, who says an electric car can't be a Lamborghini too? And I think that's the attitude that will really make them stand out in the long run. So... What do you think? Will they be successful? Can Lamborghini, a brand known for those powerful engines, really make electric cars that people will love? Only time will tell, I guess. But what's exciting is that they're not afraid to try. They're trying new technologies while still being true to their roots, which is performance and innovation. It just goes to show even something like a faulty windshield wiper can get people talking and make you think about things differently. It makes you look at these big companies and industries in a new light. Like, what's next? Exactly. Who knows? Maybe years from now we'll look back at this whole Revuelto thing and it'll just be a blip in their history. Lamborghini might completely change the electric supercar game. Now that's a deep dive. I think we've covered a lot today. From a tiny broken part to the entire future of this legendary car company. This has been great. I always learn so much from talking to you. The feeling is mutual. It's great to have these conversations with someone so interested and who really gets it. Well, I'm just happy to be here. And to everyone listening, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Lamborghini. It just goes to show sometimes the smallest things can have the biggest impact and lead to the most fascinating conversations. Until next time, thanks for listening.